Hey, brothers and sisters, I hope you're all doing well. I've just been reading through First Corinthians this morning again, and um, I'm on chapter 5 and verse 1. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication is, as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. And we know that all these stories in the Bible are literal stories. They actually happened. And in this case, they're talking about a man who was in fornication. He was having an affair with his father's wife. And as such, he was thrown out of the fellowship. Um, but they recognized that his soul would be safe. He didn't lose salvation because of his sin, but they couldn't have fellowship with his sin, with him while he was in that sin uh, because a little leaven, leavens the whole lump and it can affect the, the, the fellowship negatively. But just as I was reading it this morning, I also, you know, was thinking about the spiritual dimension to this story because there's always a literal, but there, there's a spiritual dimension to it as well. And this is just my thoughts on it now, whether, but this is what I was seeing this morning. Uh, when it speaks about him being in fornication with his father's wife, you know, I was thinking our, our God, our father, he was married to Israel. And I think it's Jeremiah 3 or Jeremiah 5. They said, it says that um, God gave a bill of divorcement to Israel because they were in spiritual fornication. And I was just thinking and pondering on this this morning. Um, there are so many Christians that, uh, many born again Christians, but they want to be married to Jesus and dating Moses. They want to go back and put people under the law. Are there many in this Hebrew roots movement or the sacred name cult or, you know, whatever these, these things are, which are the commandments of men. They want to be more Jewish than the Jews themselves. They want to be under the spiritual practices, using Hebrew and saying Hebrew names and making it all like rituals, basically, and doctrines of men. And we know that the law was given as a foreshadow and it was all to lead people to Christ. And it was given to Israel, it was never given to the church. The church has never been um, under the law. But so many people, including born again Christians, will try to bring you back under the law and place you on, uh, with all these chains and bondage on you again. But Jesus came here to free us from the curse of the law. Um, and we're now under grace, not under law. Um, so it just made me think of this as I was reading this morning, that what do we do when we have people who, who are born again believers, but they're bringing themselves and others to under spiritual fornication to try bring them back under the law uh, as if they were Israel and not saved believers in Christ because in Christ there are uh, there, there are Jews also but they're no longer Jews they're they're one in Christ um, there's no difference between Jews and Gentiles now um, and if we read further down verse 2 and ye are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he he that had done this deed might be taken away from among you you know, why aren't you throwing him out is what Paul is saying. Why are you acting like there's nothing wrong here? I mean, it's like um, the example of rat poison that I've mentioned so many times. Rat poison is 98% good nutritious food and it's 2% arsenic. And that is lethal, absolutely lethal. It's only such a tiny, tiny amount. Everything else is perfect and nutritious and good. And, you know, people say, oh, well, oh I don't know the phrase now. What is it? Chew the meat and spit out the bones or something like that. But we cannot do that when it touches the gospel. And then other people say, well, you know, these are secondary issues and matters. We say we're saved by grace. So, But the, the problem is when a secondary matter is made a primary matter, when somebody gives a secondary matter so much importance that it becomes primary, then it is affecting the gospel because it's being backloaded into the gospel. It's perverting the gospel. And it's like that rat poison. It may be 98% nutritious food that they're saying, but that 2% poison is the leaven that will leaven the whole lump and we must eradicate it quickly. And when somebody teaches that publicly or speaks it publicly, it must be dealt with publicly. Um, and they must be thrown out of the fellowship until they repent of that, they change their mind of that and they come back and they're restored. And there is no hatred, there is no anger, there is no condemnation. Uh, well, after they've come back, there's no grudges held. If they come back and they are restored to, to right thinking and in the gospel, then they're welcomed back with open arms. But they cannot be in the fellowship while they are adding leaven to the gospel. 
And Paul continues in verse 3, For I verily as absent in the body, but present in spirit, have judged already as though I were present, concerning him that had done so, so done in the, this deed. Verse 4, In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together, and my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of our Lord Jesus. They are thrown out of the fellowship, delivered over to Satan, but their, their soul will still be saved. If they have put their trust in the gospel, then they cannot lose their salvation. Uh, verse 6, your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? And so many people say, but, you know, unity and peace and love and brotherly love. We have to be nice to one another. And, you know, they're glorying in, in their goodness and, their, and how unified the body of Christ is. But we cannot have leaven in the body of Christ. It cannot be, it, it cannot be tolerated. Um, and you can't glory in this big, happy family, everyone believing something different because we, it's, it's all about the gospel. The gospel is, is, is salvation. There is no salvation outside of the gospel. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And if they're not given the gospel, um, how will they be saved? This is it, people's eternal souls that we're talking about. Uh, it is such an important thing. It, it can't be taken lightly. We cannot have fellowship with darkness. We cannot have fellowship with those who, who, who are perverting the gospel and, and stumbling babes in Christ and, and having the effect that other people will never get saved because they will never hear the gospel. Um, so what's Paul's advice in verse 7? Purge out there for the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with all leaven, the law, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the leaven, unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. There's no need for fighting, name calling, mischaracterization of teaching or of personalities, malice, wickedness, evil talk, railings. None of that is any good. There's no anger and it's not attacking people. It's pointing out false doctrines. And when somebody realizes a doctrine is false and can take a biblical correction and can be restored to the fellowship. I don't know if you can hear my dog snoring behind me. <laughs> if so, I apologize. Um, he didn't sleep well last night with the heat. But, you know, if a, if a brother and sister who is cast out of the fellowship because they have a false doctrine, a, a false gospel, or adding to or perverting the gospel, if they change their mind about that and, and are restored to the gospel and restored to the fellowship, then there's no um, ill will towards that person. They're welcomed with open arms and they're restored to the fellowship. And either way, if they're a born again believer, their, their soul is always safe. Uh, nobody's putting in doubt somebody with a profession of the gospel that they're not saved. Um, if somebody professes the gospel, we except that they are a brother and sister in Christ. But what we cannot tolerate is perversions to the gospel, whether they're adding to the gospel, taking away from it, or perverting it in any other manner. Um, verse 9, I wrote unto you in an epistle, not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters, for then must you needs go out of the world, and what it's saying is, he's not saying don't keep company with the unsaved fornicators um, and idolaters, etc. Because if that were the case, none of us would have anyone to hang out with. The whole world is fallen. Um, verse 11, but now I, I have written unto you not to keep the company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner, with such a one, no, not to eat. So what he's saying is, it's, he's not talking about the sins of, you know, you can't be with somebody who's unsaved, who's a fornicator. No, what he's saying is when it's a brother or sister in Christ, we are not to keep company of this saved, born again believer. If they're in spiritual fornication or physical fornication, um, covetousness, if they're an idolater, um, have they made an idol of something that, uh, because Jesus, Jesus is the center of everything. And when people put other doctrines or other or other issues 
as primary importance, then they're creating idols, even though they're biblical things. They're replacing Christ with something else. Like some, a lot of people hold the rapture more highly than they do Jesus because they want an escape from here. They're not, they're not developing a relationship with Jesus now. They're not getting to know him. Um, they're just obsessed with the, uh, getting out of this world and escaping. And although we all want to go, we don't want to make an idol of that either. Of course, we all want the rapture to happen. Railers, people going around just, you know, uh, railing at others. <laughs> There's so much of that. And people who are spiritually drunk um, and extortioners, there's just so many people, the money changes at the temple who are constantly going through emergencies with their channels and their PayPal is up everywhere. There's not a gospel, uh, nobody giving the gospel, but they're all asking for money and for, uh, you know, for one thing after another. Their whole ministry is based on getting money from the believers. And it's again, just the money changes at the temple. Um, and we're not to have company with such people. So when I hear brothers and sisters in Christ saying, oh, I'm sick of everyone fighting and, and, and it's not fighting. Well, some people are fighting, but when we point out incorrect doctrine, incorrect gospels, that's not fighting. It's not naming the person. It's not attacking a person or a personality. It's saying this doctrine is not correct. Please repent of that gospel and put your belief in the gospel, in the correct gospel. Um, change your mind. Uh, and that's all it is. It's not attacking people and personalities. It's just saying this is untruth because there is only truth. It is Jesus Christ and him crucified. He did it all. He paid for all sin according to the scriptures. And he rose from the dead for our justification according to the scriptures. He has done it all. He is our righteousness. He is our sanctification. He is our justification. He is our all and in all. It is Christ in us the hope of glory, not our law keeping, because we've never been under the law. Our moral law are the commandments of Christ. What is the commandment? It's that we believe on him that God had sent. What are the works of God that we believe on Jesus? It's all through the New Testament. Um, so verse 12, for what, what have I to ju judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? But them that are without, God judgeth. Therefore, put away from yourselves that wicked person. If somebody who is preaching a false gospel, adding to the gospel, detracting from the gospel, is a railer, is a slanderer, is an accuser of the brethren, um, they must be put out of the fellowship. And they can change their mind. They can come back and say, look, I'm sorry. I've changed my mind. Uh, uh, you know. And they are welcomed with open arms. But we can't have unity in the body that isn't based on the gospel. It has to be based on the gospel truth. Not all self-proclaiming Christians can be united. We see this from scripture. We can only be united in the truth of the gospel. And if somebody then changes their mind and, and, and accepts the gospel, then they come welcome back. And either way, if they're born again, their, their soul is saved. But we should have nothing to do with them because a little leaven leavens the whole lump. If you're watching these channels that have a little bit of leaven in them, that will get into your soul. That will cause you to doubt. It'll stumble you. Our eyes should never be on ourselves and what we're doing. They should always be on Christ. If anybody, the way to know what channel you should listen to and what channel you shouldn't or who, what church to listen to and what church not to is, are they pointing you to the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross? Are they pointing you to self, what you're doing, your actions, anything, anything that is not Jesus? And, you know, just to finish off in 1 Corinthians verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 2, the Apostle Paul says, For I am determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. For the words of Paul himself, that's what you need to know. Jesus Christ and him crucified. He is the power unto salvation. He is everything. The beginning, the middle and the end. So we don't have fellowship with false gospels. We don't have fellowship even if the person is a born again believer if they're perverting, adding to, or taking away from the gospel. But if they change their mind, well, we can welcome them with open arms, just like in the case of this man in Corinth. Anyway, they're just my meditations this morning. God bless you all, brothers and sisters.